Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. What a wonderful night we have. And the Lord is going to bless us in Adamawa State in Jesus' name. This is the first time we're having a kind of Bible study like this. And uh, God has raised up Adamawa State to be special. And that spectacular thing will take place in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, as the Bible words, the word of the, the word of God comes to you, something great will happen in your life. Please be patient and just stay there and understand. This Bible study is also going all over. It's reaching not only Nigeria and Africa, it's reaching the rest of the world. So the word is coming out of this place tonight. And it's reaching many, many places and many lives. It will touch your life. It will transform your life. It will turn your life around. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We know that what you all think are possible. And we know that as we come to your word, your word will bring wonders to every life transformation to every life power to every life and the word will come with anointing the anointing that breaks every yoke lord set your people free tonight in jesus name we thank you because we know it is done in jesus name we pray and adam our state says amen god bless you you can sit down we're coming to jude having only one chapter and i'm reading from verse 17 your excellency and the bishops who are here i need to make you understand please that we go from chapter to chapter as we study the bible and this period of time we're studying from the epistle of jude we've already gone from verse 1 all through to verse 16 so naturally today we're coming to verse 17 and if you have your bible there brothers and sisters men and women our friends who are here you open to jude is the second to the last book of the bible revelation is the last one and jude is just before that we're looking at verse 17 all through to verse 21 i'll start with verse 17 it says but beloved remember ye the words which was spoken before of the apostles of our lord jesus christ it says remember what do we remember remember the words which were spoken which have now been written by the apostles of the lord jesus christ look at verse 20 it says but ye build it beloved building up yourselves or your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost you find there he tells us that we need to build up build up our lives build up our christian confession and build up our christian profession and build up our lives in general building our lives on god's infallible word but there's one word there that you, you need to take to heart in verse 17 but beloved remember ye the word remember ye the word as we come for this special bible study tonight maybe you are wondering some people said we're coming for crusade you're right other people said we're coming for the study of the bible i'm sure you're right other people said we're coming for healing we're coming for miracle yes you're right let me show you something we're looking at psalm 107 psalm 107 i'm reading from verse 20 he sent his word and healed them. You see the connection there? He sent the word. The word is coming to you tonight. And then he said, he sent his word. And what did he do? He healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Everything that has tried to destroy your life, destroy your family, the word is coming to you tonight. And that word will set you free. That word will heal you. That word will deliver you. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Come to Matthew chapter 9. 
and I'm reading from verse 35, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. It says, And Jesus went about all the cities and all the villages. Number one, teaching in their synagogues. Number two, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Number three, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. You'll find three verbs there. The word preach, that's a verb. The word teach, that's a verb. And the word heal, that's another verb. And you see the three of them connected in a single verse. It says, here is the method of Jesus. Here is how Jesus did it. He went about all the cities and the villages. I'll be going around to this state capital, that state capital. And now it comes to Yola tonight. Something happened, something is happening in Yola. Something great, something wonderful, something spectacular, something sp supernatural is happening. You know, tonight it will get to you there, and it will reach you, and you'll take something tangible back home tonight in Jesus' name. What did Jesus do? Three things number one, teaching, and that's what we're doing tonight. We're teaching the word of God, we read the Bible. We examine the Bible, we analyze the Bible, and we explain the Bible, we apply the Bible, we apply the word to you. That's teaching. And then it goes on number two, preaching the gospel. The same verse, in the same way as he's teaching the word, is preaching the gospel. What's that? It's proclaiming the good news. It's telling the people who have not heard of the good news, there is good news, there is gospel. And it comes with the teaching and the preaching. And then the final thing there in that verse, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And that's what we'll come to do tonight. There is preaching tonight. I said there's preaching tonight. And there's teaching tonight. And then praise the Lord. There are signs and wonders tonight in Jesus' name. Come back to Jude now. It tells us in Jude chapter 1 verse 17. It says, but beloved, you see that? Beloved, who are those people? Those are believers. Those are the people that have tasted of the love of God. Because they have been loved by God. They accepted that love. They received that love. They shared that love. And they understood that love. And they said, praise the Lord. God loves me. For God so loved the world. You in the world. Anyone because he created us. He so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. You are a believer there tonight. I said you are a believer there tonight. Will not perish but have everlasting life. And because they come into the family of God. They are converted. Because they have been converted by God, the children of God. And because the children of God, he loved them. While we were yet sinners, God manifested his love to us. Now that we come to the Lord, that we now believe on him, he loves us much more. And he calls us beloved. When you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not done it, you are going to do it tonight. When you accept the love of God for you, and you accept the mercy of God for you, and you accept the grace of God in your life, he says, now you are beloved. Thank God, I am a beloved. Somebody there said, I am a beloved. Now he says, but beloved, remember ye. It tells us to remember something. He's telling us that when you learn and you remember, you hear and you remember, you are taught and you remember. He says, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. That opening verse of our study. Tonight emphasizes the word. Remember. And is telling us that that is the secret of all wonders in our lives. That's the secret of miracle in our life. You know, if you hear the word of God, the promise of God, then you forget. If you hear about the power of God, and then you forget. There is nothing to base your faith on. But the word comes to you. And the word comes in your heart. You accept that word. You believe that word. You remember that word. When you are going to pray, you remember. That's the word of God. That's the promise of God. I remember that. And that thing is for me. Tonight, as you remember the word, when we're praying, and you know what the Lord has told you, the Lord is going to set you free in Jesus' name. 
then I'm telling you, remember, forget not. Remember, forget not. Because for salvation and victory, you have to remember the words. And for steadfastness and faithfulness, you have to remember the word. The people that forget the word, they come to a study like this, they come to a teaching like this, they come to a fellowship like this, and then after that, they've forgotten everything they heard. There's no way you are going to be steadfast. There's no way you are going to be faithful if you're always forgetting what you have learned. But for righteousness and fruitfulness in our lives, if you're going to be righteous, you're going to remember the word that makes you righteous. The words of the Lord Jesus Christ that he has told us. And then the apostles have written everything down. You've read, you've learned, you have accepted, you have understood, you have applied. And it enriches your life. And you're always remembering it will make you fruitful. Not only that, for blessing. For signs and wonders. Who are the people that get blessed? The people that remember Jesus died for me. By his stripes I am healed. He provided for all my needs on the cross of Calvary. When a problem comes to your life, you remember not your sorrow, not your suffering, not your pain, not your sickness. You remember the promise of the Lord. It is that remembrance that makes you to have the faith that I know what the word of God has said. I know what the word of God has promised me. And blessing will follow your life. Signs and wonders will follow your life. For power and perseverance. You see the people who are easily tired, easily discouraged, and they are weak, and they cannot run the race the Lord has set before us. You know why? They forget. They forget that Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. They forget the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. It is the forgetfulness that brings weakness. You want to be strong in the Lord. You want to be strong in the grace of God. And you want to persevere. Whatever may be coming to you. The secret is remember the words that were spoken. You want courage to face life. You want to conquer every challenge that comes your way. It depends on what you remember. If you remember Satan, you remember your enemy, you remember the threat, those who are threatening, you remember this and that. You only remember problems, there'll be no victory. But when you look at the cross, you look at the Bible, I remember what Jesus said. I remember that he lives within me. I remember what he has done for me and what he promises he's going to do. There will be courage in your heart. And tonight, you are coming out of weakness unto courage. And you are going to conquer everything that has ever conquered you. In Jesus' name, we are expecting the coming of the Lord. Because he says, behold, I come. I come quickly. And he says, my reward is with me. And I'm going to give to everyone according to his word. Before he left, he said, in my father's house, how many mansions? If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Jesus is coming again. Adam, our state, I said, Jesus is coming again. And then, if you're going to be ready, readiness for Christ's second coming, you have to remember the word of God. You wake up in the morning, he may come today. In the evening, you want to sleep, he may come tonight. And because I know he may come anytime, I am preparing. If I never remember that Jesus said, is coming again. Everything I've heard, all the preachings of God, all the teachings of God, all the messages I heard, if I forgot him, how do I prepare? No, you'll not prepare. But when you remember, it is that remembrance that makes you ready. You are going to get ready. Somebody there said you are going to be ready. The word constantly works wonders in our lives. When we remember, but not only remember, think about this. I remember the word. I learned it. I read it. I studied it. I remembered, but I need to do something else. I reflect. I reflect. I think about what I hear. Because if I remember and I don't reflect, I don't calmly think through, I don't meditate, I don't apply it to my life, the remembering will mean nothing. But I remember, I reflect. I remember, I rely on him. Because I remember what he has said. 
I remember the word he has given me. I remember the promise he has given me. I rely on him. You rely on him. You will never fail in Jesus' name. And tonight, as we remember the word, I will remember Christ is going to do something unforgettable in your life in Jesus' name. I'm waiting for a good, good Adamawa. Amen. Building our lives on God's infallible word. This is a passage of scripture we're looking at today. I'm going to divide to three parts. Number one, remembering the words of Christ and his apostles. Remembering the words of Christ and his apostles. Come to verse 17 again. In verse 17, Jude chapter 1 verse 17 says, But beloved, remember, that's an imperative. Remember, that's a command. Remember, that's an instruction. It's not saying, maybe you like to remember. Maybe you might think about remembering. Can I suggest to you, no suggestion here. Can I appeal to you, no appealing here. This is a command. If your life is going to be successful, and thank God, I see successful people there. If your life is going to be victorious and praise the Lord, I see victorious people here today. Are you there? What are you? Victorious people. And that's the commandment coming to you now. Imperative, he says, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, if you look at Second Peter, if you don't have your Bible there, I'll just read it to you. Just pay attention. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 2. It says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. It says, it's not that you didn't read the Bible before. No, not at all. I'm sure you're a believer. I'm sure you, you've read your Bible before. I'm sure you love the Lord. And it says, but I come here to remind you. I come here by way of remembrance. Look at this in verse 2. That she may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. It says, we who are, talking, who are speaking to you and we who are writing to you, we're not just the people from the road. We're not people on the street. We walk with Jesus Christ. We're his ambassadors. We're his servants. We're the people, his associates. We're his apostles. He gave us the word and he said, Lo, I am with you till the end of the world. And he says, that same word I gave you. Go and give it to the rest of the people. It's the word that came to you and made you victorious. Go give to other people and they too, they'll be victorious. Remember, it says, I put you in mind. I remind you. It's my way of remembrance that you'll be mindful of the words which was spoken. I pray that you'll be mindful of that word. The promise of God. The power of God. The provision of God on the cross of Calvary. And the thing that he has done for you and done for me. He opened up the way to heaven. And he says, if you follow me, I'll take you to heaven. If you always remember that, temptations will come. Trials will come. Trouble will come. The, the times of uncertainty will come. But there's something that will make you solid. Something that will make you steadfast. Something that will make you to stand like the rock of Gibraltar and nothing will shake you. It is the word of Christ that we remember. Uh, look at what it says about that word in Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading to you from verse 35. Matthew chapter 24. And we're looking at verse 35. See what it says here. It says in verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Think about that. Why are we studying this Bible? Why are we reading this word? It says, before my word will pass away and become unnecessary. If there's anything like that and become unprofitable. If there's anything like that and become something worthless. It says, first of all, all the skies will pass away. And the skies pass away. I said that the skies pass away. Look up, look up. Do you see the sky there? The sky is still there. And then the earth, the earth on which we stand. I see it passed away. Give me an answer. No. It says, if heaven and earth have not passed away, 
my word is still there. That's why we're reading the word. That's why we're studying the word. It says, heaven and earth shall pass away definitely one day when we all get to heaven. And then he takes us home. It says, when that has happened, yet my word shall not pass away. That's why it says, remember that word. Remember that word. You know, sickness may be there. Remember the word. That word will cancel your sickness. Infirmity may be there, paralysis may be there, blindness may be there, challenges may be there. The word comes to you. Heaven and earth shall pass away, sickness shall pass away. Infirmity shall pass away. Impossibility shall pass away. Sorrows will pass away. But my word shall not pass away. This word will not pass away. Give me a good amen. John, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, I'm looking at verse 30 and verse 31. John chapter 8, verses 30 and 31. As he spake these words, many believed on him. What does that mean? They believed the word. And because they believed the word, they believed on him. Then said Jesus to those which believed on him, to those Jews that believed on him, if he continue in my word. You see the secret? If you continue in my word, if you don't remember, how do you continue? If you, if you cannot recall, how do you continue? If you cannot recollect what had been said, how do you continue? But when you remember, he said, he came to say, I remember that. He said, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. I remember that. He said, he came to be the final sacrifice. I'll be your substitute. I'll take your punishment. I remember that. He said, I give my life as ransom for everyone that will believe. And he said, whosoever, whosoever shall come unto me, I shall not cast away. I remember that. And it says, if you continue in that word, you put your confidence in that word, and you put your face in that watch tonight, something great will happen to you. And it says, Then are ye my disciples indeed in uh, John chapter 14. One of the offices and one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to bring to our remembrance this word that Christ has spoken to us. John chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 26. It says in verse 26, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost is here. I said the Holy Ghost is here. And he will teach you. He will teach you. You might hear my voice. You might hear my words. But it's the Holy Ghost through that voice and through that word that is teaching you tonight. And thank God you accept the word of God. Somebody there I said you accept the word of God. Thank God you believe the word of God. Are you there? I'm, I, I, do I have any believer there? You believe the word of God. And this word will do something in your life in Jesus' name. It says, it shall teach you all things. And bring, look at this, look at this. And bring all things to your remembrance. It must be mightily important. It must be mightily essential. It must be indispensable. It must be necessary. That we remember that Jesus Christ even sent the Holy Ghost. And he said when that Holy Ghost is come, he will make us remember. He will bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And that's the reason why then we're here. That as we study the word of God, then we remember. Remember it's the word of God. It came through Christ, the word of Christ. And then it was given to the apostles, the words of the apostles, spoken by them and reaching by them. And it says, we must remember. Thank God you remember the word. I say you remember the word. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 3. I'm looking at verse 3. Revelation chapter 3, we're looking at verse 3. It says, Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Look at this. It says, the first word there, if you have your Bible there, shout it for me, the first word. Remember, remember therefore how thou was received and heard. The words you heard, the message you heard about Christ, about his cross, about Calvary, about conversion, about forgiveness, about his mercy, about his power about eternal life he said remember therefore how thou was received and heard and hold fast you see that what you have heard don't let it go 
and don't let it escape from you. It says, hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thank God, I will remember. Somebody there, I will remember. I, I, want, I want to tell you something. I want to do this so that you will not forget. You will not forget because you will remember. If you are going to remember, raise up here and let me see you there. Wonderful, wonderful. And the power of the word will walk in your life in Jesus' name. Now, if we're going to remember, number one, you must have your own copy of the Bible. You must go and buy a Bible if you don't have one. Have a copy of the Bible. And then the first word, read. Read. You have to read. If you don't read it, how do you remember what you have not read? You read your Bible every day. And then you read from place to place, from place to place. That helps you. And the second word, remember. Remember. Don't just read and forget. You will read. Then you remember. And the next word here is reflect. Reflect. Don't just say, I read 10 verses of the Bible today. You see, those words of the apostles, those words of the preachers that we have heard or that we have read, it says, Beloved, remember ye the words that you have heard that was spoken unto you. And then we reflect on it. We meditate on it. Read, that's the first word. Remember, that's the second word. Reflect, that's the next word. Then, number four, respond. Respond. You know, if I speak to you, and then you say, yes, I know what you have said. I heard what you have said. But I say, what's your answer? What's your response? Nothing. The word doesn't benefit you. You read, you remember, you reflect, but you never respond. If you're going to respond, you say, I know what that word is saying. The word is telling me, come out of darkness and come to the light. I'm going to respond to that. And the word is telling me, stop all your doubts and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your savior. I'm going to respond to that. It says, anytime you have trouble, pray unto me and ask me. And I will show you great and mighty things you never knew. You're going to respond to that. It is the response you give to what you remember. That's what benefits you. The first word, read. Everybody shout, read. The second word, remember. Help me shout it. Remember. The next word is reflect. Everybody shout it out. Reflect. And the next word is respond. Everybody respond now the next word is recover recover you know we've lost a lot of things in our lives if you will check up your life when you were young the strength you had the vision you had the courage you had the fearlessness you had look at look at our lives today we've lost a lot of things and what we have lost the lord is going to make us recover tonight Maybe you've lost your health, you're going to recover that sin. You've lost your freedom, you're going to recover that sin. Because that's the reason why we're here. We're not just here to read Bible and then to remember. And then there's no result in our lives. We we'll read, we we'll remember, we we'll reflect, we we'll respond, we we'll recover. Now, sometimes you look at a building and the storms have come. Everything is demolished. And where are you going to live now because the building has collapsed? Then you say, I'm going to do something. That building, I still have the master plan in my hand. I'm going to rebuild that thing. Tonight, your life, look at your life. Is it battered? Is it shattered? Is it broken down? You're going to take this word as the instrument and the tool. Your life, we're going to rebuild it tonight. Somebody give me a good amen. You rebuild, you rebuild. That's why we're here. We want to rebuild our lives and then reproduce, reproduce. You see, God has given us the master plan. He says, uh, my dear daughter there, this is the way your life ought to be. And then my dear son there, this is the way your life ought to be. And now we're rebuilding, you're going to rebuild your life, and eventually we'll reproduce a master plan from your life in Jesus' name. Read, I will read. 
Remember, I will remember. Reflect, I will reflect. Respond, I will respond. I can't hear you. Recover, I will recover. I will recover my strength. I recover my energy. I recover my enthusiasm. I recover my desire to live. To live a good life. I'm going to recover. I will recover. I will rebuild. I will reproduce. Uh, let's do something now for you. This to help you remember. You know, sometimes when you write a letter, you say, Dear Daddy. Dear Mother. Dear Sister. That word, dear. How do you spell that? Wonderful. Wonderful. Have a good class here tonight. Uh, tell me again, dear. How do you spell that dear now? D-E-A-R. Hold on now. That word dear. I'm going to use that word dear. D-E-A-R. Drop everything and read. Drop everything and read. You know, in your life, if you say, I will read, I will read. You're too busy. You don't have time to read the Bible. Carve out the time. Make out the time and say, from this time to this time, early in the morning, or from this time to this time in the afternoon, or from this time to this time before I sleep, I drop everything and read. Then your life will become dear. Drop everything and read. Will you do that? Number two, disregard everything and remember. That's still the word dear. Disregard everything and remember. You see, many things will come to your life. And as you are remembering that, tears will be coming out of your eyes. As you are remembering, uh -uh, how can so and so do this to me? How can so and so do that to me? How can so and so do that to me? You forget everything you should remember. Now, disregard everything. Everything people said, everything people did, everything people might have done to you, you disregard everything and remember. Now, number three, digest everything and reflect. You see, when you hear the word of God, it's like food. And then when you take in the food, how do you grow? Because you digest the food. It comes to you. It saturates your life. It fills your blood system. It affects every part of your life. You digest what you eat. The same thing with the word. This word you have to remember. You digest everything and reflect. Not only that, you decide everything and respond. I take a decision. The word of God comes to you. You say, I'm going to be a man of decision. You see, the people... Who are lost in life and the people who are just here and there and they become non-entities in life they are worthless in life you know what they never make any decision they are not people of their own mind they cannot say i decide i'm going to study i decide i'm going to rise up i decide i'm going to get married i decide i'm going to train myself i decide i'm going to get education but it's the people of decision those are the people that make it in life. Dear D E A R, decide everything and respond. Tonight you are going to respond. I'm going to call you to decision because Jesus Christ will make your life better. Jesus Christ will turn your life around. And you need to decide on that. Now, D E A R, dedicate everything and recover. You see, you lay your life on the altar for God. And you say, Lord, I dedicate my life unto you. I surrender my life unto you. I dedicate this heart I have, this life I have, this time I have. I dedicate everything and uh, I'll recover. You will recover tonight. Somebody there said you recover tonight. Now, look at the house. You are building the house. The window is shattered. The doors are broken down. All the roof, everything is leaking. You come there. You don't, you're not even proud of that house. You cannot say, that is my house. They say, that's your house. That's where you live. That's what you built. You want to do something because your life tonight is going to be rebuilt. 
I said your life tonight is going to rebuild. Demolish everything and rebuild. Demolish everything. Take the master plan in your hand. God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. And let them have dominion over everything. But look at us. We're so weak. Look at us. We're anemic. Look at us. We don't even have feet to stand. But now, demolish all that ramshackle seed. And let us rebuild our lives with the word of God. Demolish everything and rebuild. Now, and those of us who use uh, the laptop, there's something we do. Whenever you see a program, or maybe you finish with that program, and you don't uh, want it anymore, and you want something new, something new is coming upon your life. Am I talking to somebody there tonight? I said somebody new, something new is coming your li in your life. A new life. A new husband. A new wife. A new family. A new progress. A new vision. A new sustenance and power in your life. How do we do? The things that we know, I don't like that in my life. I don't like that in my life. I don't like that in my life. Is the word dear again? D-E-A-R. Delete everything and reproduce. Delete everything and reproduce. All those things that are not good in our lives, tonight we delete everything in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now. Point number two. We're coming to Jude chapter 1. And I'm reading from verses 18 and 19. Jude chapter 1. Verses 18 and 19. It says how that they told you they should be mockers in the last time. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust? It's telling us what the apostles have said. That he wants us to remember. It's now giving us warning. It's giving us a challenge. It's telling us, it says, this will come, beware. It says, this will come, avoid. It says, this will come, abstain. It says, this will come, take heed. It says, this will come, flee. It says, this will come, withdraw yourself from that. You see, it gives us warning. There are people that, well, I remember this, I remember that. But there are things we ought not to forget. But searching again, how? They, that is those apostles. How? Who are they? The ambassadors of Christ. It says, how that they told you. How that they preached unto you. How that they wrote for you. How that they explained unto you, expounded unto you. There should be mockers. There should be scoffers in the last time. Who should walk after their own ungodly laws? It says, these people, these be they who separate themselves. Then it says, they are sensual, not having the spirit. That point number two is recalling the warnings of Christ and his ambassadors. Recalling the warnings of Christ and his ambassadors. You see, even Christ warned us. He warned us. And we need to take the warning of Christ to heart. The warning he gave us. Look at Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 25. Matthew chapter 24. And we're looking at verse 25. Here is the warning that he gave us. He said, behold, I have told you before. He said, don't say I didn't tell you. Remember. I told you, he gave us the warning, and then he said, Behold, I told you before. What did he say? What did he warn us about? That he said, he reminding us that he told us before. Look at verse 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive even the very elect. And then he says, Behold, I told you before. And let's look at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. The warnings of those ambassadors of Christ. The warnings of Christ and the warnings of those ambassadors of Christ. We're looking at Philippians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 17 here. In verse 17, it tells us, brethren, it's still saying the same thing, beloved. It's saying children of God, members of the family of God, brethren, be ye followers together of me, and mark them which walk 
as so as she have us for an example for many work look at this now many work is warning us is alerting us is telling us there's some people that walk not according to the word of god of whom i have told you often and i'll tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of christ who send his destruction whose god is their belly and who, whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things it says abstain from such people the people who glory in shame the people who exalt darkness and defilement and evil it says you will avoid them it says you'll beware of them it says you'll withdraw yourself from them it says you'll abstain from them because if you're wearing white shirt or white uh, garment and then there's somebody that is uh, carrying oil and he wants to spill that on you you run away you say i want to keep my white garment the lord will keep you in jesus name i said the lord will keep you in jesus name he gives us the warning and the warning he gives us we're going to abide by them in jesus name somebody says here amen i'm looking at uh, colossians now colossians chapter one you see uh, the word warning is many parts of the bible let me just read uh, one or two we're looking at uh, philip at colossians chapter one verse 28 look at this it says who will preach preaching that's what we're doing now and it's coming to you it will change your life i said it will change your life then it says warning every man think about that warning every man that's what those apostles of jesus the ambassadors of jesus that's what they did they want the people what's warning is saying you want the light wonderful there's darkness in the corner there on the way from darkness it says you love christ wonderful there's satan in the corner over there avoid satan it says you want good it says wonderful there's evil in that corner there avoid evil that's that's one that's what he's saying and sometimes uh, they put uh, something red and then they write danger danger if there's an exposed wire electric wire and then they say if you touch that beware that's warning because somebody loves our lives he doesn't want us to face that danger or to be destroyed and therefore he gives us the warning and i pray that the warning god has given us to run away from darkness I run away from Satan. I run away from evil. I run away from crime. I pray we will abide in Jesus' name. I thought Adama would say good, good, amen there. Yeah. Look at that verse 28. Who will preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man. What's the next word there? perfect in christ jesus that we may present every man perfect in christ jesus you know sometimes when i read my bible uh, many years ago if i read that word that we may present every man perfect in christ jesus i'll say perfect in christ jesus impossible impossible how can we do that and we as ministers and preachers of the word of god it says here is what we're doing the reason we're teaching the reason we're preaching the reason we're giving exhortation and the reason we're ministering is so that we'll present every man perfect in christ jesus but that's that's very simple now i understand it better because i've read that verse over and over uh, let me explain this to you in this way there was one thief on the cross he was about to die and you remember he was a sinner and as remembered he was a sinner the other thief on the other side of the cross was making jazz if you are jesus and if you are savior if you are power deliver us from the cross and the other man said why are you talking like that we are suffering for our own sin but he is the innocent one he is the redeemer he is the savior then he turned to christ somebody there tonight you'll turn to christ I said, somebody there tonight, you'll turn to Christ. He said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today, today, today. The man was a sinner, remember? The man was a criminal, remember? But Jesus said, today, you will be with me where? Help me shout it out. In paradise. Now, what happened to the man? 
the Lord perfected him and took him to heaven. You say, how? Number P, he was pardoned. That's it. He was pardoned. Every sin that he ever committed that led him to that crucifixion, the Lord forgave him. And when the Lord looks at his life, at that point, no more sin, no more condemnation. He was pardoned. Not only that, he was enabled. Enabled. That is, Jesus said, I give you the strength. You will be with me in paradise. You don't have the power by yourself. I enable you. I energize you. I'm taking you to heaven. That's the E there. He was pardoned. He was enabled. He was righteous. God, Christ gave him his righteousness. You didn't have any righteousness before. You were dirty. You were unclean. Now I transfer my righteousness unto you. That's a perfect man right there. Pardoned. Energized. Enabled and righteous, forgiven, forgiven. And then the man could say, I don't feel any guilt anymore. Yes, I was a sinner, past tense, but now he cleansed me. And the blood of Jesus washes me whiter than snow. He was forgiven. Not only that, you know, entirely belong to Christ. Entirely in Christ. He says, you are my Lord. He said, Lord, remember me. You are my Lord now. You are my master now. Entirely I surrender myself to you. See, he was converted and then he, he was transformed. That man was perfect right there because at that point when Jesus said, Today you'll be with me in paradise, all sins pardoned and forgiven, enabled, righteous. And then he was uh, totally forgiven and now he was going to heaven. That man, like that tonight, it will happen to you. I said it will happen to you. The blood of Jesus will wash you. And the word of Christ will come to your life. And then when God looks at you, all your sins are gone. All your sins are forgiven. And you have a new life in Christ. He says, now I'm going to present that man, that woman, unto the Father. And then the Father looks at you. And he looks at what Calvary has accomplished in your life. And the Father says, he looks at Jesus. And he says, you made this man perfect. You made this woman perfect. He's talking about you. I said he's talking about you. And then as you heed the warning, we're warning every man, teaching every man, that we might present every man, every woman perfect in Christ Jesus. The grace of God will be abundant to your life tonight. Somebody there, are you there? I said the grace of God will transform your life tonight in Jesus' name. I'm coming to the final point now. This is point number three. I'm coming back to Jude verse, uh, verse chapter one. And uh, we're looking at a verse, uh, we're looking at uh, verse 20. In verse 20, already is one does to, you know, flee from the people that are sensual, that are devilish, that are evil, that are defiled. And now he says in verse 20, but ye beloved, ye beloved, tonight you'll become a beloved son of God. A beloved child of God, a beloved daughter of God, but ye beloved, building up yourselves, there is anything the devil has demolished and thrown down. Tonight, we're going to build it up. Your life, he'll build it up. Your family, he'll build it up. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves, or your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You see, there is prayer in the Holy Ghost. We pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the endowment of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the assistance of the Holy Ghost. And every prayer will pray like that, like the one we're praying tonight for you, God will answer. Give me a good amen. It says, building up yourself. Building up yourself. How we built up? What's it that builds us up? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 32. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. And we're looking at verse 32 here. The Lord will build you up. If you're still there, I said the Lord will build you up. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. You see that? To the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. The word of his grace, which is able to build you up. As the word comes to you day after day, this word will build you up. And then in Jude, it says, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. On your most holy faith. 
the faith that conquers every problem and the faith that demolishes every sin, every stronghold the devil might build in your life. That faith is coming to you tonight. You're building up yourself in your most holy faith. In Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. It says, above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the darts of the wicked, arrows of the wicked, invisible arrows of the wicked tonight, they are crushed in your life. They're destroyed in your life. It says, you're building up yourself by the word of God. Or your most holy faith. Then it says, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. That means tonight, we we'll pray. And when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, your heart is there. Your mind is there. You're not wandering here and there. You're not, uh, you know, wondering, will God answer? Will God not answer tonight? God will answer our prayer. Because it tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Praying always, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And now it tells us in Jude chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Keep yourselves in the love of god wonderful keep yourself in the love of god the lord will keep you i said the lord will keep you how, how do you understand that how do you understand that keep yourself in the love of god look up here if you can see me you draw you stand up don't stand up now but you stand up and then you draw a circle in your around yourself and then that circle, inside that circle, represents the love of God. And the Lord is saying, as long as you are standing inside that circle, Satan will try to touch you, his hand will not reach you. Evil will try to grab you, they will not be able to grab you. And the arrows of them, they fly here and there, stand inside that circle, inside that circle. I know God loves me. I know God loves me. I know he doesn't want me to perish. I know he's going to protect me. And I stand in the love of God. And the love of God is flowing in my life. I'm standing inside that circle of the love of God. You'll be victorious every day in your life in Jesus' name. And then it says, looking for the mercy. We're not looking for marriage. We're looking for the mercy. The mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful Lord, loving God, compassionate God. He loves me. He loves me. And he shows his uh, mercy unto me. He has saved me. And then he has healed me. And then he has delivered me. Everything I've got, I got on the mercy, on the basis of the mercy of God. And the mercy of God is like a deep ocean. A deep ocean. It will never run dry. That mercy is here tonight. I said that mercy is here tonight. It will reach somebody there. What is it? I said it will reach somebody there. The mercy of God will reach you in Jesus' name. That's that mercy that forgives. That's the mercy that saves. That's the mercy that heals. That's the mercy that delivers. That's the mercy of God coming your way and you are delivered in Jesus' name. And then he says, unto eternal life. Unto eternal life. That means he takes hold of your life today and then until you get to eternity, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Because you stand in the circle of that love of God. And he says, you're hoping for, you're looking for, you're, you're praying for, you're designing that mercy of God until unto eternal life. And tonight, the Lord will show that mercy. And that time has come for you now for you to receive the mercy of God. Anybody waiting for the mercy of God there? I said anybody waiting for the mercy of God there, the mercy that will bring forgiveness, the mercy that will give you joy of salvation, the mercy that will give you the redemption of Christ because he died for you. And he said, you will not perish. You will not perish. You will not perish. Am I talking to somebody there today? You will not perish in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Already we've heard the word of God. And the word of God says we must remember. What do you want to remember? Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. 
The word of God says, remember, what are we going to remember? That Jesus Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. It says, remember, what am I remembering today? That Jesus said, you can call. Call upon me whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is coming to you. I said, salvation is coming to you. Remember that, remember that, remember that all the time. This is the word he has spoken. And he said, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word, the word of love, the word of mercy, the word of salvation, the word of righteousness. My word shall never pass away. And that word is coming to you now. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You want this mercy of God. This salvation of God. And you're saying, yes, Lord, I have found out. I remember. I remember. And that salvation is my today what are you you raise up your hand you say lord i want that salvation i want that forgiveness i want that eternal life i want that conversion come to my heart i open up my heart jesus says behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and he opens the door i will come in unto him and i'm going to stop and fellowship with him raise up your hand if you're raising up your hand you'll stand up Anywhere you are, in front of me at the uh, pavilion, anywhere you are, you are raising up your hand. You want the mercy of salvation. You want the mercy of forgiveness. And you want the mercy of eternal life. And you're saying, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. I remember that word. If I come to Christ, it will not cast me away. If I come to Christ, he will not reject me. I remember that. I remember that. Always remember that. And therefore, I raise up my hand and I stand up now. I want salvation. I want forgiveness. And once he forgives me, if I die anytime, I will go to heaven. You stand up wherever you are. Stand up wherever you are. It's coming to you right now with that salvation. And he says, you call upon me, I will save you. I will forgive you. I will change your life. The joy of salvation will come to your heart right Right there is coming, it's coming. Just raise up that hand and stand up. As you raise up your hand and as you are standing up, just tell the Lord there, right there, and say, Lord, I come to you. Lord, I come to you. Lord, I come to you. I am a sinner, but thank God I believe Jesus is my savior. Save me now. Save me now. Save me now. Forgive my sin. Change my life. Turn my life around. Yes, Lord, I accept. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I confess that Jesus is my Savior right now. And everybody said, keep on standing. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for our brothers and sisters who are standing up now. They know that you died for them to take their sins away to be their Savior. Lord, I pray that assurance of salvation give unto them now in jesus name i pray lord that all their sins will be forgiven and the mercy the love the compassion of christ is saving the lost and saving the sinner manifest that mercy in their lives right now in jesus name that the joy of salvation reside in them now and lord help them to always remember this day always remember this word always remember this provision that you are forgiving them and save them. Always to remember they are on their way to heaven. Give them the grace to continue with you. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. The wonder of the world will work in your life today. Healing will come to you. Deliverance will come to you. Signs and wonders will come to you. Give me a good amen. Praise the Lord. Adam, our state, if you are there, I say, praise the Lord. The time of his wonders, that time is here already now. It will touch your life. I said it will touch your life. Remember the beginning, I read Psalm 107 to you from verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20. I'm going to read that again now. He sent his word. That word is coming to you. And he healed them. He will heal you. And delivered them from their destruction. Deliver them. He healed them. He delivered them by the word he sent unto them. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Your blind eyes will open. 
your lame legs will jump up and walk. And then those who are deaf and dumb, God will open your ears and your mouth. And whatever is uh, there in your, point in your body that is causing any problem, a miracle is coming your way. He sent his word. That's what the centurion said. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Are you ready now? Identify that problem, that sickness, that infirmity and raise up the other hand. And then you lay one hand upon yourself when you have the problem. Then we'll pray. When we pray, we mention Jesus' name. You say, Amen. And then when you say the final Amen, the miracle will be right there. Raise up that hand. We're ready now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight because we know that you have not lost your power. You say you are God and you change not. Lord Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I pray, Lord, as we went about all those cities and villages, and you are teaching and preaching and healing every sickness and every infirmity, I pray that you'll do the same thing tonight. Touch your people. Heal them in Jesus' name. Deliver them from all their destructions. That spirit of infirmity, I command you there. Come out in Jesus' name. That spirit of madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. And whatever is swollen your body, like elephant tears in your leg, or whatever it is, such bad or goiter, I command that thing that is swollen there, come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have incurable disease, like cancer. Cancer, you are healed. Cancer, you are healed. I pray that those cancer germs will dry up right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have also touched them right now. Heal that also, Lord, by your mighty power. In Jesus' name. Those kidneys that are not functioning anymore. And then you're all swollen up. I command those kidneys come alive. Those kidneys have the power of God resurrecting you, raising you up. In Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any kind of sickness, issue of blood or pile or whatever. I pray the Lord touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are deaf and dumb. That dumbness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. And deafness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, touch their vocal cords. That they'll open their mouth. They'll speak out in Jesus' name. Touch those eardrums. Open it up. I pray, Lord, they will hear in Jesus' name. For those who are blind, I pray the Lord will touch those blind eyes. Blind eyes be opened. Blind eyes be opened. That cataract come out in Jesus' name. Glaucoma come out in Jesus' name. And those who have dimness of sight, receive your sight. Receive your sight. Lord, give them bright vision in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are lame. I pray for those who have one leg shorter than the other. I pray for any withered hand. I pray for those who have, a, a, those who have any kind of paralysis or any kind of stroke. I send for the power of God on your, on your body. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Lord, everywhere on this ground, Lord, to the right, to the left, at the center, at the back, everywhere, manifest your power. Give them the healing. Do your signs and wonders. Give them the miracle. Deliver your praise. Affirm and confirm your word in every life right now that, Lord, there'll be the shout of victory. There'll be the shout of joy. There'll be the shout of healing. Confirm the healing deliverance in everyone right now. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Praise the Lord, it's done. I said it's done. Check up yourself and you will see the power of God is manifested on your life right there. And as you see the miracle, give a shout of joy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord unto the Lord. And we're going to rejoice with you.